Hello, people of the internet, this is Kaiju Noir, and here with me today is fellow YouTuber Pete. Hey guys, how's it going? So, we're here to watch a movie. Yep, we're here to watch Michael Bay's newest film, Pain and Gain, which is supposedly the only reason why Michael Bay is coming back to make Transformers 4. Really? Yeah, you see, supposedly Paramount said, Wait, Michael Bay's leaving? We already lost the Avengers, we can't <laughs> lose the Transformers. How else are we going to make our... American Pie humor-filled oh Transformers. <laughs> so they decided to say, say, hey, Michael, Michael, if you help us direct another Transformers movie, we'll help you make Pain and Gain, that movie you've always wanted to make. Yeah, and I've, I heard the movie's going to come out, I think, like before uh, the second Transformers, right? I was, re I was reading something about it where he meant to re uh, or make this movie at least sometime between the, the second one or the third one's release of Transformers. Uh, the Transformers 4, you mean? Maybe. I don't know. Maybe I'm lost there. <laughs> <laughs> so, we decide to... We're about to go see the movie right now, but we decided to record our opinions on what we have seen of the movie so far and our give our predictions on how this movie's going to play out. So, what do you think? Well, first, I want to ask you, what do you think of the Red Band trailer so far? Uh, I haven't seen the trailer. To be honest, I haven't seen the trailer that much, but from what I have seen, it looks pretty interesting. Because I've seen four of Michael Bay's movies, The Rock with uh, Sean Connery and uh, Nicolas Cage, and the Transformers trilogy. I liked the first mo Transformers movie. I liked uh, The Rock, and I really did not like the last two Transformers <laughs> movies. So, Because right. with the Transformers movie, it feels like Michael Bay, he just does, simply does not care about Transformers. Just mindless action. Yeah. Let your so, brain go away. And, but with this one, it looks like he's actually he actually cares about what he is doing here because you know I, it looks like this movie is, was all of his creation. Hmm. Like he came up with the idea with the story. I think. I see what you mean. Well, so I I guess they can. I'm sorry to interrupt. It's okay. But <laughs> it seems I have good thoughts. I have um I have a good feeling about this movie. High hopes. Yes, high hopes. I have high gotcha. hopes. Well, for me, I guess maybe I shouldn't have seen the tra <laughs> trailer. But one thing I saw from the trailer was I kind of felt like at first, what before when I just read about it, I thought it was gonna be a typical action movie. I didn't even think it was gonna have anything that seemed like comedy like. Mm -hmm. But that's what it seems it's going for as well. Um, but after seeing some of the trailer, I was a little afraid it was gonna go for some something like uh, almost like the Hangover kind of thing, where mm -hmm. it's just guys doing some mindless antics, and that's kind of what it's going for. Although they have like an actual, it seems like they have an actual goal of what they want to do. I really want to see, you know, how it's going to play out. I have to say, it. Uh, I haven't seen The Rock in a movie in a while, so it's uh -huh. really funny seeing just how bulked up he is now. <laughs> it's insane. <laughs> Speaking of The Rock, it seems it seems like 2013 is the year of The Rock. I mean, we've he was in this action movie called um, Stitch or Snitch. I think it was Snitch. And then he was in G.I. Joe 2, and he's in this movie. And then he's going to be in Fast and the Furious 6. Oh, that's right. <laughs> oh, my gosh. He's in everything now. Oh, and yeah. last... I think... Wait, did Fast 5 came out last year? Or? Fast 5 uh, should have come out last year, I want to say. Oh, like early last year? Early last year, or at least two years ago. Because I know it's on video, I believe. Uh-huh. It's probably a year or two on ago. On video. I, I, yeah. <laughs> like, I remember those old days. Now available on video and DVD. Oh, yeah. VHS? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, I guess we, uh, we both have... Strong, uh, we both. I, it looks like we both have high hopes about this movie. Uh, somewhat for me, I'm kind of like in the middle of it. Like you uh, know, it has okay. potential, but it could go the other way around. It could go like you know the typical co like comedy action where it's like generic. But we'll see. It definitely seems to have some kind of a unique story, mm -hmm. and the real story is actually kind of dark. So I want to see what this what this movie is really gonna go for. Right? Didn't you say that this was based on a true story? It is. However, I really hate when movies say that right. because with saying that it's based off a true story movies can get away with anything literally all it could be is the characters and there you go you know, based on a true story as far as I'm aware of go ahead you know what that whole based on a true story you know what movie ruined that for me Texas Chainsaw Massacre <laughs> really well, yeah don't, isn't that supposed to be based, based off Ed Gein from what I've heard or parts of that I did not look. Um, I did not look that much into it. I just know that you know, obviously, Leatherface does not exist, nor do the events of Texas Chainsaw Massacre two, three, and four in the <laughs> right. in remake. Of course, they none of them happened. But um, this, the actual story is a lot darker. Like I said, hmm. it's very dark, and I'm surprised they're bringing it to film. I don't think they can bring the kind of darkness that comes from the actual story into film. Mm -hmm. I think that'd be way too violent, and I don't think that's what they're going for. Again, with the comedy, uh -huh. it could fool me. 
Yeah. But again, from what from what it seems like, it's going to be a little bit lighthearted. It's obviously going to be a lot of violence, I'm guessing. A lot of girls, of course. <laughs> but that's just what I'm thinking. Okay. Well, let's find out, shall we? Yeah, let's go. We'll be right back, fellas. And we're back. Woo! Well, I gotta say, that was definitely not what I expected from that movie. Yeah, truth be told, I was a little surprised with what I got. It wasn't exactly, like you said, it wasn't what I was expecting. There was some cha- some things that I just didn't see coming overall. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely, especially by the second half. Yeah, <laughs> the, second, the, first, the first half, admittedly, was kind of a little, not really slow, but they did a lot of weird things. Um, but the second and third half definitely picked up in controversy or action wise <laughs> well before we actually go in depth with that let's just give a quick uh plot synopsis yeah so pretty much pain and gain is sort of basic kind of like michael bay's take on the scarface story where you have mark Wahlberg as daniel a uh, bodybuilder he and his friend uh what's his name adrian played by anthony michael anthony mackie they um they're both bodybuilders they're not they're very unsatisfied with their lives so they decided to uh, to rob this one um, individual, I think his name was uh, Victor, and they recruit uh, Paul, played by Dwayne Johnson, and the three of them basically work together to pretty much torture the living hell out of Victor. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, until, so that Victor can eventually give up all his money to the, to the trio. And from there on, like I said, it's kind of like a Scarface story where it's like the rise and fall, uh, uh, the rise of and fall of the these, characters. Uh, yeah, these characters. Because at the end of the day, they're a bunch. They're a bunch of dim-witted, meat-headed. They're the bad guys. Yeah, yeah bodybuilders. <laughs> you know, in, in the end, they're they're. It's nothing more. They're really the bad guys. They might be the protagonists of the of the of the movie. Right. But they are the bad guys. Yes, indeed. I mean, yeah. Uh, so, an, uh, initial initial thoughts. I was a little, I guess, I guess uh, um, surprised. Like I said, surprised by just how evil it went. I guess I want to say I was surprised by Dwayne Johnson's performance. How they made him into a very holy man. You know. Yeah, he's like a very, uh, like a very fragile kind of person. Like he he needs to depend on others. To right. to get by emotionally, get by, and unfortunately, um, the Lugo character, what was it, Daniel? Yeah, he's very manipulative, and that's, oh yeah, that's, that's something I didn't really see with uh, uh, Paul's uh, Paul's character, Dwayne, uh, Dwayne's character. Yeah, I didn't really see uh, see him being manipulated. You know, it's The Rock. You know, how could you see you know someone like him being manipulated? Yeah, but they make it work in a sense. You oh know? yeah, definitely. I mean, this is definitely. Uh, not the kind of role that you would normally see Dwayne Johnson um, be in. I mean, I feel like he was actually this is actually the like probably the most emotional <laughs> the most emotional performance I've ever seen I, out of him outside of being the badass. I have to say it was really funny seeing um, The Rock as buff as he is with a flimsy little skateboard. <laughs> I thought that was hilarious. Yeah, I'm like, what's going on here? Um, he had some pretty good scenes too, and he 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 was pretty funny as well. Um, and what about uh Daniel uh, Mark Wahlberg's character? Mark Wahlberg, I found him really hard to be likable. Then mm-hmm. again, I don't think the movie. Well, that's the thing. It I, I I feel like the movie tries to make the characters a little likable, a little uh-huh. um, by you know saying how they want to be the best, what they want. But they're really they're they're terrible people in general, and obviously you know yeah they're 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 uh, they're the bad guys of the film. Yeah. But um, I find it hard to have a connection with them. I don't know. How about you? I feel like the film actually succeed succeeded at making them likable characters at the beginning. Mm-hmm. However, I, I think this is supposed to be one of those stories where you know this is what happens when uh, when you try to when you try to live life in the fast lane. You end um, you end up getting consumed by greed, and that's I think that I think that is why. By the second half, these you know you see them as the bad guys because they are pushed to the extreme. Yeah. They're pushed to the limits. They, you know, so in order to not get caught, they were willing to do things, you know, pretty much unthinkable <laughs> things, in order to avoid uh, avoid getting caught, avoid getting captured. Yeah, I think I think that's what I liked. What the film was trying to do, I like what Michael Bay was trying to do. 
And I thought, in, on, in my opinion, I thought that drastic change mm-hmm. worked for the film. Yes, I, I can see what you're, what, uh, what you're what you're saying. One of the bigger issues I had with the movie, though, was with the tone it had. Mm-hmm. For them, it was so, like, it wasn't that big of a deal. But when you think about, like, you know, the music's playing, it's very, like, lighthearted. There's nothing really, like, um, gripping. It's not really like, oh, my God, we just, you know, did this to someone. They're like, yeah, you know, they don't really care in a sense. That for a moment, they'll be like, oh, my God, what did I do? But afterwards, they'll, they, you know, they don't care. They're, they're, off, they're off to do, you know, um, get more money, you know? Yeah. And I feel like, again, it's, it's just feel, it feels like death isn't really that important after the first five minutes, you know? After they do something incredibly terrible, they're off having fun the next minute. Hmm. I, I, I don't really see it that way. I mean, I think I th- I, th- I saw of it as like a very slow and steady progression. First, they do this sort of thing, then they do something that's even worse, mm-hmm. and then they do something even worse than that. <laughs> yeah. And it's at that point that you know th- they say, you know, f it, we've al- we've already gone this far, might as well go all out. I guess I, I yeah I guess so. Um, I guess, it's just such a dark tone with what it what it deals with. Mm-hmm. Um. That again, like I, I don't know personally. I feel like yeah, like you say, you know, at the end, you're like, you know, what up? We, you know, we did it. Too late, you know. Might as well keep on going. Yeah. But um, I don't know. Like, I don't know how I feel about that <laughs> in a sense. I mean, it makes sense, uh, character wise. You know, uh-huh. they know they know they've messed up. Yeah. They have nothing to lose, pretty much. Right. It's like a, uh, basically live free or die hard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's very true. Uh. If there was one thing you know for you know for a fact that you know, you did not like about the film, what would it be? What I don't like about the film? That's a tough one. <laughs> I mean, you you have mentioned yeah. your dislike of the drastic change in tone by the second half of the film. I guess again, I th- I think it comes down to the part where like again, I feel like it wasn't a very serious movie for the seriousness of of what it was. It it was more comedy than it was um, seriousness. That's just the mm-hmm. way I see it. I feel. That it was, I feel like it should have taken itself more seriously. Mm-hmm. Um, again, I just saw maybe a little too much comedy in there, uh-huh. but at the same time, that's kind of what they were going for. Um, at least that's what I feel like, you know. Uh-huh. But that's just my issue. I, mean, I see. I don't know. see How about you? Well, there were two things. Okay. One were the char- were uh, several of the uh, side characters. I thought that a lot of uh, several of them were useless. Useless or not very developed, such as uh, what was that? The third guy. Uh, Paul? No, not Paul. Uh, Adrian. Adrian? I, yeah, I felt like it was kind of, you know, he was just there. He was just the third guy. I, I feel like he was more, there more than anything there for like the laughs. You right. Know, he, I he mean, was he, usually involved in most of the gags. Yeah, I mean, he's. I felt like he was just a one note character, you know, a one joke character. Yeah. Basically, I, I definitely he's, agree. basically he's he's a character who suffers from erectile dysfunction, and basically that's his whole shtick. The whole like the whole movie. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, no... with Dwayne Johnson, you have like him dealing with um, the trying league. to yeah trying to find religion to help him find a better life, and you have... He breaks his convictions, you know, he goes on to, like, um, you know, he breaks yeah. them. Yeah, and, and he... I, find, I thought that was kind of fascinating, and with, uh, what's his name, Daniel, he's, you know, he's the kind of guy who wants to, str- he wants to strive for more, he wants more than what he than what he has in life. Right, like, even, even you know, obviously, near the end, you know, yeah. or in the end, he still feels that same way, you know, he still feels right. positive, you know, like, he can outshine that he, he's gonna mm-hmm. rise up he still feels that very yeah. same way and in that's again in that sense I'm, um it goes back to like to the previous thing like again i feel kind of bothered by that you know mm-hmm. he doesn't feel any remorse for it doesn't seem like he yeah. feels like any remorse for what he's done but that's his character right and that's why he he well i don't want well i don't want to go into it because <laughs> then that would end up spoiling spoiling the movie right so, so basically that is exactly why i did i was not i did not like uh there I go, forgetting his name again. Um, the third guy's Adrian? name. Yeah, Adrian. That's why I did not like Adrian. And yeah. there was that one, that Ukraine stripper. Oh, I did not like her. Yeah, I did not like her at all. I'm, I mean, I'm, she, <laughs> like, she was, uh, her, she was like, she was like, played up for laughs even more than Adrian's character, than Adrian. But like, she, she just was like. It's, completely useless it's like and typical like you know you, you think of like you know someone with <laughs> a silly accent you know just throw in someone with a silly accent there you go you got yeah. a character for, made for the laughs right throw, throw in a little cleavage throw in a little like you know sexy or like you know sexual you know um, humor humor and there you go you got a, you got a new character yeah and that's what leads me to my uh, the second complaint was these sort of things that you would 
expect from a Michael Bay film at this point. Oh. Which is the humor, you know, like I'll throw in a little person. Yeah, I in don't. There. I don't know what the purpose of of him was. I really don't. No, it's just it's just. But he was basically there for a sight gag. Yeah, pretty much. Um, let's see. What's another one? A guy who's like in char- who has makes a business off of uh, phone sex, and his wife. Oh yeah. Did they get much? They don't get much. They only get like two. Uh, two parts of the movie. Like well, one with uh, when they're in the bar, and one obviously you know. Later on. Yeah, later on in the movie. Yeah, they yeah. play an important part of the movie, but their characters weren't really, you know, yeah, they were, that that fleshed out. Yeah, they uh, and you like I said, you get two. Well, one in the very beginning is very slight, and then during the later yeah. events, they become important, uh-huh. but not because of them. You know, not right. because of, of their actions or what kind of people they are in that right. sense. Right. So basically, I so I guess you you basically have a cast of. Two really interesting characters, and the rest of them were rather, you know, weren't really that interesting. Although I do have to say, uh, I forgot to men- bring up Victor. I want to ask you about him. <laughs> yeah, I really, I, th- I thought he was pretty cool. I mean, he's kind of like that typical snobby rich guy who, th- you know, he he worked hard for his money, and so anyone who tries to mess with him, you know. He's going to give them hell. Yeah. He's going to give them hell. Make sure he gives them hell, you know. And he sure is a fighter. <laughs> like, yes. He sure can take a bunch of beatings. Yes. I kind of like that. Like, he's he's a he's kind of a dirtbag. Like, yeah. But, uh, and it doesn't seem like he's learned anything near the end at all either. Right. I mean, but then again, he is supposedly the victim. He is the victim in that yeah. sense. He's a bad man, but he's a victim. And throughout the movie, they clearly explain that, you know, by no means is he a good man. And uh-huh. even the people trying to help him acknowledge mm-hmm. that. And that's kind of the reason why, you right. know, in the first place, you know, that happens. Another character I wanted to talk about is... Uh, the private uh, detective that he hired. Ed the Boys. <laughs> was, was, who is he? Uh, I can't. I don't know. Pronounce it Ed the Boy. Yeah, Ed the Boys. Yeah, um, played by Ed Harris. Yeah. I thought he was awesome. I thought. Yeah, I thought. Um, he was really well played. Yeah. I like that. You know, he was. He seemed much smarter than than the other cops for, right. for one thing. And how he's he was a little hes- hesitant um, to go to the aid of Victor in the first place. Mm-hmm. Um, but I thought he was a very you know, unique character. Um, he definitely like you know brought something different to the to the movie, right. and I kind of wish I would have seen a little more of him. Right. I mean, he. It, it is funny that you know, despite how crazy and over the top this movie is, he's the most grounded character, the oh, most yeah. realistic Logical. character. Yeah he, yeah. yeah. he makes you know the more the most, the most sense, and like you said, he's he appears to be almost like the most human like, but sometimes mm-hmm. I feel he's lacking in emotion. Yeah, I guess you can say that. I mean, he has a very strong and stern face. Yeah, that's just what I get from him. But that's a good thing in that sense, you know. Mm-hmm. He's, you know, he's a detective. He's technically, you know, one of the good guys. Right. I mean, he's supposed to be. He, you know, he is unlike the unlike uh, the trio, the main trio. He, this is a character who is not who is like the complete opposite of these three characters. Right. He's not a dim witted um, bodybuilder who's way in over his head. He is an experienced cop and. They, you know, he's like the perfect foil for them. Now, were you were you like wanting him to catch them? Like, did you did you want the characters to be caught? Or? Not really, up until the very end when they go over the edge. At over that point, edge. you know, he's like, you know what? These people deserve what, what, what you know. They get. <laughs> yeah, and um, but then again, the same could be said for the. Uh, for a movie like, I keep bringing this up, a movie like Scarface. Mm-hmm. With Scarface, you have Tony Montana, and you want to see him, you know, succeed. You, succeed. Know, you yeah. want him, you know, rise through the ranks, mm-hmm. and eventually, you know, he gets consumed by his newfound wealth well, that he ends up making decisions. The thing I remember about that movie, in that, in he's at least a, a bit remorseful when it comes to um, to other people, right? You know what? You're right. I remember there's that scene where he's... Um, I don't want to kill that kid. That kid. Yeah. That kid. There's no room. Like the only character that shows any hint of remorse is the Rock's character, and that's only near like the first half. Like uh, his scenes with um, Kreshnov or whatever his name is. <laughs> what was it? Um, Kershaw, Victor. Uh-huh. Um, while a little bit like over the top of how friendly he is, you know, mm-hmm. you really feel like you know like he's not he's not seriously in there. You know, he's being manipulated into this. Yeah. And there's a specific scene where like you know you see just how sad he is. You know what yeah. he has to do, just how manipulated he is, and he's really the only character I feel somewhat of a rem- of remorse for. Mm-hmm. Um, again for the for the two other leads. Um, 
uh, Daniel and Adrian, I really don't feel that much sympathy for them. Uh huh. Because again, to me, they were straight up douchebags. Uh-huh. <laughs> That's just something I, I had. I had to add to that. Hmm. What did you think of um, Adrian's uh, partner, her wife? Oh, his wife. Oh yeah, I've seen her before in one other movie. I, yeah. uh, I forgot what it was. It was a movie about like acapella singers in college, acapella groups in college competing against one another. And she put her name. The, the name of her character was Fat Amy. Was that High School Musical? No, that's, no, it's not High School Musical. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's like. What well, 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 is it? <laughs> Uh, raise your voice? No, I have maybe, no idea. I'm not sure. Maybe that's a Hillary Duff movie. I can, I can why do I? Why I know there's a Hillary Duff movie called maybe called that <laughs> because of my sister. She oh. she had that movie. Gotcha. Uh, but yeah, she was in a movie about like acapella singers, and she was really entertaining in that movie. And she ha- still had that same um, that same energy that she brought into this movie. Although I'm pretty sure Michael Bay just hired her just so that he can you know have some fat jokes in there. What it kind of she kind of bothered me because the only I mean, she could have had a good potential role for me, but the only role she really had was throwing in the sexual and innuendo jokes. That's the only yeah. kind of joke she ever got. Yeah, she didn't get really a chance to expand. Um, you felt kind of bad for her in the yeah. end, but even then, in the end, she's still making sexual jokes, and right. it it just feels like her character hasn't been elaborated on, hasn't been expanded yeah. on. Oh well, yeah, if she was played by a different actress, there'd be no difference. He, no, no. Actually, I think there would be a difference because mm-hmm. you know, I think I think that you know because of, of her her mm-hmm. acting abilities, you know, the, like I said, that energy she brought to that role, it kind of made it, you know, s- some um she okay. she I took s- that material and made it something more memorable than if it, if it were like another uh, just a uh, an unknown act- actress. I, I think I under- I understand what you're saying now. Yeah. Um. And that's why she wasn't one of those characters I initially described as being bland, use- bland or useless or one note. Yeah, one she, note. She definitely has a personality. Yes. I mean, that's. I mean, well, it might be like kind of like you know, but <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah, she's she definitely has a personality, but definitely not one of my favorite characters in the movie. Uh-huh. Uh huh. I think personally, again, my favorite character was um, the Rock. Uh-huh. He oh. has. He he has some some pretty good scenes in the in the in the whole movie. Totally got agree. I agree with you right there, Rock. Best character. If you're gonna see this movie, see it for The Rock. Yeah, he goes in Johnson. He goes through so much, and in the end, it's kind of like it's kind of cop out in a sense. I don't I don't know how that really worked. You know, you know the ending. Yeah, what happens to him? It's kind of weird. I'm at. <laughs> uh, no, I I like what what was done with him. Really? Yeah. Um, I I it felt heartwarming, but at the same time, a little like mm, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I but it it really did feel like nice to see him. You know, Ex- uh, you know, try to uh, what's it called. Try to um, better himself. In a sense? No, no, no. It's like I forgot. It's a phrase you say. Like he's trying to expand himself, trying to like stretch, trying to uh, widen his widen his acting abilities. Or oh, you mean the actual actor, though? Right? Yeah, the actor. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, trying to broaden his. What was it? Broaden his. <laughs> Well, audience, if you know what phrase I'm trying to say, you know, please comment. <laughs> please comment um, uh, below. Tell us <laughs> please tell us in the comments below. So, want to go on to uh, final ratings? Um, yeah, absolutely. What'd All you, right. What'd you think? I thought it was a uh, a really decent movie. I um I was quite surprised by this. I mean, the first half of the movie feels like a Michael Bay movie. Then by the second half, it doesn't really feel so much about so much. Although there are strong hints of the kind of tropes that he would put in, basic when it, basically the sexual uh, humor. sexual humor. Although there was only one explosion in this movie. Really? Yeah, the car. Was the, that really it? Yeah, that was that was it. That was only, it, huh? only one explosion. Yes, guess what? Guess what, everybody? Record. Michael Bay does not depend on special effects in this movie. Record. <laughs> that's a record. That's a, that's that's that must be the the so the time. <laughs> he he can work with he can he can work without two hundred million dollars. Oh yeah, actually, he can still make he can actually make a good movie. Without special, without special effects. Yeah, I was reading somewhere where like um, the actor, the main actors themselves weren't really taking much from the movie itself. Actually, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, this is really, I think, one of his um, lowest budget movies that uh, that he's made. I think that's what I read. <laughs> I forgot I was reading that. I, I for, I, I, wasn't this movie like twenty million dollars? Was it? 
I'm not sure. Let me see. We'll find this out. <laughs> Supposedly, he, I think there was a quote of him saying that he's so happy to go back to his low budget roots. And I'm like, wait, 20, yeah. mil- 20, 20 million? 25 million is apparently I'm the sorry. cheapest. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. 25 million is not low budget. That's okay? a lot. Of yeah. Money. <laughs> Heck, you, if you go on the Sci Fi channel, you can make, you make like 20 movies out of that much money. Oh, yeah. But. I mean, what it comes down to is, it was a pretty decent flick. Right. Um, what would you rate it overall? I would give it probably a 3 out of 5. I mean, it's a it's a really good watch. I, I recommend you guys watching it in the theaters. Although, I think there, you know, there it's those things, those nasty habits of Michael Bay that, you know, just, I don't know, pull, that pull it, that weigh it down. I, I can definitely agree with that. Uh, for me personally, I'd probably give it around a two point five somewhere around there, uh-huh. and I'd say you know it's it's the kind of movie where you watch once and you don't really get back into it. Um, like you said, I think this kind of movie kind of fits the big screen. Mm-hmm. I don't see myself renting it had I not seen it here, mm-hmm. um, nor buying it. It's it's for me it's more of like a one time viewing kind of thing. Right. Although, and, oh sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> well, if I were to have seen, if I were to you know have ca- if I were to catch this on on TV. Uh-huh. You would know, you, you would stay on the channel. Yeah, I would stay on the channel. Mm, I I guess, I guess I would I'd have to agree on that, but it's not something I'd go out of my way, out of my way to rent uh, right. to watch again. Yeah, um, decent flick. I I liked it. There's some uh, parts of it I really enjoyed. Um, no no are like you know fantastic, but it's 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 a pretty good movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, there you have it, guys. My both like our review of Pain and Gain. Hope you guys enjoy it, and we'll hopefully see you next week when Iron Man 3 comes out. Until next time, everybody, take care. See you guys later.